So I'm going to the recording. The recording has started. Okay. Hello, everyone. This is Shelley Beard of karmictools.wordpress.com and Santa Gabriel of santagabriel.com. And we are together live in Mount Shasta with a live group in front of us and a worldwide group on the telephone. So we are very blessed and grateful for everyone that is joining the circle and anchoring the light on the planet for this beautiful season, the sacred season of summer solstice. So I would like you, Shanta, to begin opening and introducing whatever you have at the moment before we get started. So everyone just relax into your Unmuted. Did chew your heart. Muted. Breathing into our heart, allowing love to flow into our heart. Take our breath. Call on the light from the highest state. I call on this light, light of love, intelligence, Go all the way through our beliefs tonight that we might be a search for light and anchor that light on. We have this light joined with our higher self, that our higher self join together in a dance of harmony, beauty, freedom. And unity consciousness, allowing this unity to flow through the circle as we gather together tonight. We allow this light to flow through our crowns, bringing more wisdom through our third eyes to bring us into illumination, neutrality. and inspiration, allow the light to throw, flow through our throat chakra, anchoring compassion for ourselves and all others, anchoring us in the place that allows us to express our greatest, highest love and freedom in the world as we are our deepest self, our most authentic beauty shining through us to bless the earth. Without a light to flow into our solar plexus, bringing this beautiful golden light of protection, strength, and fortitude to do all that we came here to do and express our highest reality in this lifetime. We allow the light now to flow through our second chakra, bringing us into a place of unity within our beings, allowing creative solutions to be within our lives. And then through the base chakra, we are anchoring well-being within our ourselves, within our human forms, and onto the planet that all beings could live in this sense of wholeness, unity, and nourishment. We allow this light to flow down into the earth, connecting deep into the heart of the mother. And from this place of alignment, I call on the archangels. I call on the universal presence of nature. And I call on the presence of Mount Shasta in great gratitude, the sacred mountain. We ask for a blessing on this circle tonight. 
may all in this circle know that they are incredibly loved and cared for eternally. And as we celebrate the solstice, may we anchor the light through our bodies and into the earth right now. And so it is. Thank you, everybody. So happy that you're here. We were so honored to be in Mount Shasta tonight. This is one of the seven most sacred mountains in the world. And it is a gift to be in the presence here. We have a sense of, of the highest frequency that we can connect to when we are in Mount Shasta, that we are gifted with that. So it's a perfect place to anchor light onto the earth. And so we've been called to this place tonight to recognize that we come together as a unified whole to anchor the presence of divine light through our beings. And the solstice is the perfect time to do that. And it's amazing for me to be here with Kelly live. As most of you know, we have been doing this together for a very long time, but usually we are in our own little nest <laughs> and we don't see each other. And so this is a great opportunity to actually be live and in person. And we're with this beautiful group here in Mount Shasta, too, that are shining hearts to everyone. So we came together, the first time that Kelly came to Mount Shasta was 2014, and we had an incredible retreat that time. We went up on the mountain in a group, and we called our soul gifts into our human forms. We asked that we be able to express it, and this is, we said the prayer for all beings. May we all express our soul gifts in the world and bring that that presence into our lives. So since that time, 2014, we have all, everyone on the planet, everyone that's conscious and awakening, we've all been building our light bodies. And as more and more light has come onto the planet, as we become more aligned to our divinity and connected to our true self, and our ability to, to bring this higher level of consciousness through us, we have been able to build these light bodies now. And this is the year that we are actually anchoring our light bodies onto the earth so that they might continue to, to build in resonance and serve us as we serve the divine in everything that we do. So this on this solstice day, we are really recognizing that this is the time to bring heaven to earth through us. So we are going to be aligning with this divinity in all our prayers tonight, in our intention tonight, and in the meditation that we do. We're here with Kelly Beard who is going to talk to us about the astrology of this time and what we can do to use the frequencies that are so available to us. And she's going to make it really practical. So I'm very uh, grateful that you're here to, to add that. I have a message for us all from Archangel Gabriel. Maybe we can start with that. Okay. I have a message from Archangel Gabriel that, I received a few days ago. We just finished a, a large group of us from people all over the world just completed an 11-day spiritual practice that my guru taught us, and it's called an honest song. That means it was a spiritual practice for a specific purpose for a spe specific number of days. And every day we received a message from Archangel Gabriel, and every day people all over the world would be praying together for this anchoring of the light. And so these beautiful messages from 
actually different archangels started coming through and we were sharing them. So I want to share this one with you. Dear ones, ecstatic states are sparkling in the energy surrounding you today as Archangel Gabriel's realms open to you within the orange rays of pure light. And I would just like to add also that Mount Shasta is Archangel Gabriel's retreat. So this is it's all very planned and connected, I'm sure. <laughs> These expansive frequencies herald new communication skills, creativity, and communion with the deepest aspects of your being. Your highest self is inspired by this light. And your ability to connect with your soul's voice is more pronounced than ever before. The archangelic realms of Gabriel have been seeded into your consciousness today, creating a sacred space for you to access guidance in your physical world. The sacred mount of, mountain of Shasta is Gabriel's lair. It is an exalted light field that empowers the world as it blazes rays of divine light into the atmosphere from its highest peak. Mount Shasta also acts as the base chakra of the earth and anchors your highest dream into the crystalline grid activating the new frequencies on the planet. The sacred mountains all over the earth are now activating an empowered grid system that connects these higher dimensional frequencies, like a sacred web of light that enables new alternative realities to thrive, including worldviews as expansive as divine light. From these newly anchored systems, creative solutions abound that allow you to set forth on pathways of truth that provide you ways of life where you can create abundantly. These new foundations have opened doorways into the realms of life that you are only imagining now. Do not curtail your visions and dreams. Don't tell yourself they're not realistic. Bring them to earth in the unified field of the orange ray and allow these frequencies to empower you into new action steps towards your visions that bless the earth with unity. You are the ones that open the way for sacred union onto the earth plane. Soak it in like a thirsty plant and let the dry soil of your soul drink the creative sweetness of God's love into your being. Explore the many shades of orange that can nourish you as the fruits they are named for. Abundant frequencies of tangerine, mango, peach, and pumpkin to name only a few. Myriad nuances of the orange ray to open your energy systems so you can drink from the nectar that activates the creative forces working through you. Be an open vessel for this movement of creativity. Invite new solutions that are beyond what you imagine. And expand your boundaries to include the archangelic activations transmitted to you on this day. The frequencies of the archangels are inherent in every ray of light that sparkles through your cellular structure, igniting your very cells with divinity. As you listen to this, your energy field is vibrant with possibilities. Allow new light-filled activity to work in the most practical, mundane, and seemingly earthbound areas of your life. And you'll be surprised how you can fly heavenward in new ways. 
Never forget that you are profoundly loved. You are being carried on the wings of angels as new gateways open for the divine light permeating your life so that you can be a blessing to the world now and always. With grace and ease, it is done. And so it is. Deep breath, everyone. Just let that sink into your soul. And now I'd like to invite Kelly to speak with us. Okay. Hello, everyone. So we are going to... Maybe I do need it. <laughs> so, summer solstice, the midpoint in the year, with shamanic astrology and quite a number of things that honor the wheel, the turn of the wheel. I honor the eight sacred seasons, which is winter, spring, summer, fall. And the gates of power are the midpoints between the primary seasons. And bear with me, you all, please. I can still hear this echo. And I don't know quite what to do about it. I'm going to give this a shot. That's better. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> so, the summer solstice. We initiate on winter solstice, and we move around the wheel to the last season. It's called the Scorpio Gate of Power, and that's usually the first week of November, and I call that Access to Ancestors. And do you really need me to speak up into the mic? That would be better. There we go. Okay. So we, I work with the ancestors a lot. That's pretty much my primary focus. And for now, we honor the life-death life cycle. That's part of the turn of the wheel that we like to work with. And when we get to summer solstice, this is the extreme maximum light, whereas winter solstice would be the shortest day and the longest night. And the equinoxes, of course, bring balance. So right now, we're soaking in the light, and we're at that season of productivity and culmination. Everything that we've started from December to now is in process. It's already here. So whatever's working, we want to honor that. And we want to <clears throat> move over a little closer to Shanta. <laughs> and then I could be a little louder. So it's time to replenish and check in with what is working and what you have in terms of your masculine feminine balance. This is also considered the sacred marriage of Mother Earth and Father Sky, the masculine and feminine, the yin and yang, the inner and the outer of your own self. So this is where we can renew our own vows and commitments to ourselves and each other and the earth and make new commitments, you know, as we recognize what's in play already and what is coming to fruition with alive and well. That's where we want to put our focus at this time. And anything that hasn't taken by this time, we're going to let that go because you don't want to pour any more energy or resources into that. At this stage, it is time to start bringing it. After we pass this next three days, now everyone probably already knows this, but solstice means the sun stands still. The sun stands still for three days around this time. And we like to honor it three days before the day of and three days after very often. And it is such a magical time. All kinds of things open up, pathways and energies. And there are activations. The planets are all doing something wonderful to support us as we do this. But it is time to just check in with where you are <clears throat> and in that balance. Now, one of the ways that I explain, you know, we're, we're all working really hard on the divine feminine and being open and receptive and when you're working with the feminine aspect of your being, it is the part of you that knows how to contain, nurture, and protect. And we want to open up to receive. That's the receptive side of ourselves. The masculine side of ourselves, whether you're a man or a woman, is the part of us that holds our boundaries and gets our ideas out in the world and negotiates on our own behalf. 
So wherever there is a little bit of an imbalance, this is the season to sort of check that out. If you are naturally inclined to operate in the feminine, then I would encourage you to give your masculine a little chance to get some practice and get some fresh air and, and, and work with it a little more consciously so that it can serve you. And part of that is holding good boundaries. And one of the big uh, markers in the sky, Chiron rules our healing and our education, has been in Pisces for the last eight years, and it is about to move in the next year. But what that means for everyone is that we have been working very seriously over the last eight to ten years on our own personal boundaries and the sensitivity issues and the, all the different energies and dimensions and things that are opening up and awakening for everyone. It is, it's been a practice to learn how to keep your boundaries and not absorb what's going on in the world or our own families. You know, there's a lot of people that can't handle the higher frequencies or the speed at which Mother Earth is vibrating at this time. So we want to always hold space for those folks to integrate whatever it is, though it's not too much for the system, you know. And so we want to honor that balance. And right now we are honoring the turn of the wheel, which is to remember our mission and purpose and to connect to our own creative fire. That's the beauty of this season as well, is all the fiery. We honor the south and shamanism, and that is the fire. Archangel Michael is our protector. We call in the protectors during this particular season. There are different things at every season, but this one is for protection, passion, and manifestation. Like I said, anything that you've gotten going is in process. It's already sort of got a little base under it. However well it's doing is what you want to focus on at this time and tune in to what you can do to pull it to fruition by the end of the year. And certainly by fall harvest, you will know <laughs> as, as how much is really taking root. But this particular season is... We, let's say, works with fire and water, which are both purifiers. And so we do some cleansing. I like my teacher, another teacher, I have a couple of teachers, um, Pixie Lighthorse calls it the three Cs. We are constantly cleaning, cleansing, and clearing. Whether it's our chakras, our energy field, our light body, we want to keep it nice and bright and strong to protect our field as we move through. So this is a time that you can focus on purification within your own body or your environment. This is a good time to go through the house, just like spring and fall cleaning is good. But even right now, anything that's cluttered or, you know, blocking the flow, we want to open that up as best we can. And it, and everything is kind of unique and customized for everyone. Some people might want to focus on purification. Another piece is power, you know, fortifying our containers and our boundaries so that you can handle more power, that you can handle more energy moving through your system. And that's one of the reasons we work with the angels and the, our, the ancestors and ourselves is to learn how much we can really handle. And so if your circuits have been blown lately, it's, it's good to start grounding and just being a little nicer to yourself <laughs> and not trying to take it all in because, we, you know, our systems weren't meant to process the huge worldly things that are going on. So the best thing we can do is bless it and pray and, and hold space for it all. It, we know it is all unfolding in divine time and order, and we trust that. And we are developing mental, spiritual, and physical strength right now and fortifying our, you know, our individual channels. And like I said, the boundaries is a big thing right now. Love is a huge part of this because, like I said, it was a sacred marriage. This is divine union within you can, like, you can renew your own vows to yourself. There are times in our lives where we take vows or we make these statements uh, about what we will or won't do ever again. And in addition to all the planets that support this, the season supports a, let's say, break to realign. Let's renew that vow. You, sometimes we do that under duress or we're not quite in our right minds or our filters aren't clean and we're looking at it from a different angle. It is okay right now to say, you know what, I'm not doing it that way anymore and I'm committing to doing it in a completely new way. And you are completely supported to do that. And like I said, protection is a big part of this season because whatever you have cultivated, you want to protect it. It's your creative baby. This is what time it is. So anyone that is, you know, working on different creative projects, this is it where you have to remember all new things are delicate. New beginnings are very delicate. They need protection as well. 
and anything that's just starting to get lively and come to life at this time for you, that again needs some protection. So cultivating that connection between your heart and the ancestors and angels also helps call in additional protection, which is what we kind of live for and what we do all the time. And so it is time to honor and celebrate everything that you've already accomplished thus far, um, whatever you want integrated by winter, which is in about six months. And we want it integrated so that it can support you. That's the other thing. I always encourage people, it's great to get all this information and to understand what's going on, but if you don't integrate it and you don't activate a certain a level of practice, then it can't support you when you really need it. So we always want to encourage you to take time to process it into your own system, to take what works for you and leave the rest because that happens too over here. You'll get one, something always comes through, very individual for each and every one that joins our circles. They all get a message that feels really special and unique for each individual. And you will, <laughs> each of you will. Time to complete what it, or tweak what is already in progress rather than starting new. Like I said, whatever's in process now, let's bring that to a close or bring it to a completion in a conscious way. And so time to complete or tweak whatever's already alive and well. Time to work with fire and water, which both have to do with creative creativity and flow. And so whatever's going on in that department of your life, it is time to either activate it if you've been stuck <laughs> or really pay attention to what is growing in terms of power. Um, that feels juicy and feels like you want it to expand. That's what we're going for. And we want to both, you know, purifying and cleansing agents to assist with the creative flow. That's bringing the vision into the manifestation. We want to, you know, we feed our intentions, we claim what we want, and then we start taking our baby steps to making it happen. So right now, you might be just cultivating a vision, and that's okay. What is it that you would like in form by the end of this year is something to, to think about. And we, it's always time for gratitude, but this is an special, special time for gratitude for all that is and just honoring the prosperity and the energetic flow that is near you and moving through you and moving around you so that it can expand too and it can multiply and grow. And we want to take time to honor the source of our supply, that is spirit. Spirit is infinite, and that is our source. Any, every, every way that material things or our finances, our money gets to us, that's a channel. That's not the source. So we get a little crazy in our human selves about those things, and we always want to just remember the source is infinite. And we may need to figure out new channels, and we may have to figure out new pathways, or we may have to clear some stuff to open up the pathway so that prosperity and well-being and everything else is a little easier and flowing a little more consistently. But honoring that source is, is vital. And so calling on your ancestors, angels, and animal spirit guides is always helpful. We do really have all the answers within us, so most of the time we're only asking for confirmation through these other things, these other ways and means of getting information and clarifying what we're thinking and feeling and sensing around us. You know, it's, it's it's good to have confirmation. That's part of our human <laughs> that we need along the way. And if you have too much going on now, then there is tremendous support for releasing the non-essential. You know, just stripping down to the essential is so useful to, at the time and just simplifying. We definitely need to simplify on every level any chance we can get, but this season really supports that as well. And if you have, if you're feeling stagnant, you know, if you don't have too much energy, maybe you don't have enough energy, then there's even more, more support, activating that fire and water and that flow to really wake up what's going, what is possible for you within. And time to connect with your own version of protection. Like I said, your, your energetic force field, the light body, Shanta's going to explain a little more about what that is for us, but it is our protective field that we can control the energy that goes into that, that light-filled space that surrounds us and that light that is from our heart. One of the things we always talk about in our circle is how the heart is the only electromagnetic organ in your body. So that connects us to the core of the earth and the protective field of the earth. We have that within us. We are made in that image. You know, We are able to 
flood that system with light and fortify it, or three golden rings of light. There's all kinds of tricks. It whatever resonates for you, you know, that's what we say. When I do my breath work and we picture crystals with different lights flowing through them, it's not that it's flowers, you can pick what works for you and still really maximize the energy and the support that's going on right now. So just honoring that sacred marriage is what the season itself is. It is time to make new commitments or renew your commitment and on some level is always useful. And there's a new purpose and making the connection to the new community. Our community expands all the time, but this is really magical and, and perfect. And we are in a delicious space right now energetically. The planets up in the sky are supporting so much. So winter, spring, summer, fall are ruled by the astrological signs, Aries and Libra, and Cancer and Capricorn. And the way I explain those, Aries and Libra is very much about self versus other, the individual within the context of relationships. And Cancer Capricorn is basically home versus work, our personal security versus our material security, and, you know, how we feel on the inside and what we're creating on the outside through all that. So these are the, the seasons. And so another way I explain that is those seasons are change times. It's a turning point. It's time of decisions and choices and crossroads that happen at winter, spring, summer, and fall. And in between there, we have four other gates of power that are ruled by the fixed signs, which is Taurus, Scorpio, and Leo, Aquarius. And those signs, they're called fixed, and they, for most of us, will allow us to anchor and root something. And on the other hand, things could be too rooted. And so fixed means it's kind of hard to change at the same time. So we work with that balance at that time. And winter, spring, summer, fall are solar seasons, while the gates of power are very lunar. and They're kind of the work we would do behind the scenes is very personal. Anytime we're working with the moon, it's personal. Your moon sign rules your past lives and your early childhood and the things that go into forming you that coming into this lifetime. So it's a powerful placement to work with all the time. And so right now, up in the sky, we have Jupiter in Libra. And Jupiter rules our truth and story and has a 12-year cycle. So it's only going to be in Libra this one time, and it will and it will go away until 12 years. <laughs> so Libra is about conscious equal partnership and balance and reciprocity and peace and harmony, and Jupiter is expanding that. Anything Jupiter touches, it expands. And we are learning. We're learning of how to relate with each other on a whole new level. And so for the last six months and another couple months, not long, I think he moves into Scorpio in August or September. So we are wrapping it up. And so that little piece, our truth and story, is all about right now anchoring that balance and reciprocity in all our relationships. So if they're not balanced and reciprocal, this is the time to address that. And like I said, renew the commitment, renew your vows, renew your dedication to whatever it is that you would like through those partnerships. And it can be personal, professional, your partnership with yourself and your own heart. It can be your partnership with Earth and the work you'd like to do there. You know, it's just, and it's all, we always want to think of it as conscious equal partnership. When we're working with the crystals, we're in partnership with the crystal. The crystal's alive. The flowers are alive. Everything that we work with is alive. So that's a relationship that you want to cultivate, and it's so supported. So as that planet in Libra, we have Uranus, the planet of awakening, and the liberator is in Aries. And so I've been teaching this one as, supporting us to be individuals and to, and really illuminating how much we have to do for ourselves. But I always tell people you don't have to do it by yourself. <laughs> you do have to do your own personal work yourself. But then it is really beautiful to have a community and have a circle and have a partner <laughs> to play with and to bounce ideas off of and to have that energetic support around you. And whether it's very direct or, or not, it's still energy and it's still really supportive. So Uranus is waking us up. And it's only in a sign every 84 years. So the last time it was in Aries was actually back during the Depression era. So there's a lot of sudden changes and suddenly everyone has to be responsible for themselves and suddenly there's a new path to take. And, and it's pioneering because Aries is, is the brand new. And so... You sort of have to walk by faith and, and bushwhack your way through and, and make a path, you know, where you can. So we have this part of, you know, the one planet that's awaking us up to our individuality, and then this other planet that's teaching us 
more and more every day, especially over the last year, how important it is to have a community, to have one, two, three people in your life that you can count on. You know, you don't need a million, but one or two really good people is so valuable. And so they're working on us, on that individual versus the relationship or the community or within the context of the community. And then we have big boy Pluto, the planet that's farthest away and very subtle, so it doesn't really affect us directly as individuals so much unless you have placements in your chart. But it's in Capricorn, and the last time it did that was during the American Revolution. So we have done a full circle. And with Pluto and Capricorn, Pluto will death, reverse, and transformation, certainly, but it's also power, sex, death, and money, and all the things people don't really want to talk about but have so much to do with being a human here on the planet. <laughs> so it would be really nice if we could open a dialogue. Because it's not a bad planet to work with, I assure you. I'm personally acquainted with Pluto as it conjuncts my moon. So I'm intimately related. But at this point, for us to consider, we have this access. And we can hold the prayer and the vision for the world, which is what we are definitely going to do tonight. Pluto is transforming our bigger institutions. That's government, education, health care. All of that is, is, has run its course, essentially. And it's time to start clean and fresh. And however we can pull that off, we just, again, have to pray and hold faith and know that it's coming together in perfect divine time and order. So Pluto is on that Capricorn side. So this month of Cancer, which is just activating today, is bringing in that fourth leg we don't always have or haven't had in the last year or so. So this is stabilizing something in a way that is three-legged, and that's cool. The Trinity is great to work with in certain realms. But to stabilize something, we want to bring in that fourth leg. And so normally, during the rest of the year, I would tell you, bring in the cancer energy consciously to balance it out. Then you have to sort of be conscious. Well, cancer is all about what nurtures and nourishes you. And again, with your emotional security and your sacred space and what, how and where and when you go to replenish yourself and to take care of yourself, so this is the season for that, too, people. Anything that you have neglected or postponed over long is probably up and probably needs some attention. And so this month, I give everyone permission to really tune into your own body, mind, and spirit and see where there might be a famine or some neglect or some imbalance, you know, just a basic imbalance that we can pull back in. And we also want to recode or, you know, do this in a new way, are any childhood memories or traumas or dramas that you carry with you, this is a beautiful and useful time to release them. And where all the planets and the stars and everybody supports that kind of release because once you sort of pass the crisis, we want to let that go so that we can move into new space. And again, things that happen to us really do make us stronger. So allowing them to be integrated for something useful is good. So just nourishing and protecting yourself and your creation, your baby. You know, you may not be having babies, but your creations are your babies too. And so we want to nourish and check in with those and do any kind of inner child healing. One of my little tips for working with this um, energy cancer Capricorn is to treat your family like a business and business like a family because often we get too attached and it can be very emotional and uncomfortable, but that little trick has worked for me. <laughs> so I, I have better boundaries with family, and I just love my, my, my work people. <laughs> and nourishing your own needs. This is another thing I'm really across the board giving everyone permission to be selfish. Selfish is not, it's not selfish. It's self-preservation. And what we have to do to take care of ourselves, to function in the world, it is not wrong or bad. There's no shame, blame, or guilt involved in any of it. If you if it works for you, that's what you do. And you hold your boundaries as best you can. We're practicing. We're practicing new language to um, teach our loved ones or people nearby or the people we work with. I, you know, sometimes I have to correct people. Well, I used to think that way, but I don't think that way anymore. I used to do that, but I don't do that anymore. And so really encouraging folks to be here now and be in the present moment. And sometimes you have to remind them because we get stuck in our own people's minds. Like my family, for example, there's some of them that my family members haven't seen me since I was seven, so they remember seven-year-old Kelly. <laughs> and some haven't seen me since I was 16, so 16-year-old Kelly's kind of locked in their brain. And I'm like, 
dude, I'm almost 50. <laughs> so that ship has sailed, I assure you. Um, but <laughs> it's all good. Um, so, again, with the sacred space, really important to bless that and create a little corner in your own home, wherever that is. Most of us find a way to do that. But if you don't, I highly recommend it because everyone needs a corner in the world to feel safe and, and okay that <laughs> you can – cry or you can write out all the crazy stuff going on in the world and move through it and then hopefully release it. <laughs> so uh, one of the little rituals you can do, the really easy ones, mm -hmm. um, is a, what we call a burning bowl. So anything that you want to release out of your life, you can write it down and I usually rip it up and then burn it and you take the ashes to living water and give it to God and that's when you really just let go and let God. So we can do that as well. Because moon rules cancer, I'm going to encourage everyone to honor the moon, to just give it a little thought that the moon does really affect our bodies directly, just like it does Earth. And there's a rhythm to it. And as you get used to the rhythm, you know, some people do better on the full moon or the new moon or the quarters or what have you. But once you start to feel it, it can really serve and, and it supports you in other ways. And at this time, we're not in the thinking mode. We are totally in the feeling mode. So does it feel right to you? And then with cancer coming up, your moods are your messengers. What are they trying to tell you? When you have a mood come through or come out of nowhere, I, I stop. I'm like, okay, what is this all about? Because <laughs> you're disrupting the key here, and i got things to do. So we want to, once I started asking, though, and I am a cancer, so I really had to master this one. And so, <laughs> <both> are. <laughs> and, um, so I started asking, it stops detouring me, let's say. You know, once I started asking, what is it? And that's kind of honoring yourself, honoring your mood. Okay, this doesn't feel good. What is it? Let's just get it clear as best we can in this moment and um, and be okay with it. And so cancer also brings up our ancestors and our ancestry. And so this is another thing I always encourage people to remember. You are the first of the next seven generations. So if you want to break negative patterns in your family bloodline, you can and it is completely supported. There's so much energy in the world right now between the planets and eclipses and different waves of energy that allow us to truly break to realign where our, our family patterns are concerned. And because that is my big thing, patterns and cycles, it works when you work it. I have been tracking for over 30 years now and paying attention to how certain cycles repeat themselves in our lives and once you can feel, and that's why I say start with the moon, because that's the easiest one for all of us to understand and to pick up on and is kind of written in common everyday places that you can find out information and you don't have to learn astrology or anything. <laughs> Everyone sort of knows the moon's important. So we want to honor that rhythm. So this is another thing about this time of year and solstice in the next three months is, is integrating everything into a new rhythm, into a new pattern for yourself that can be really productive. And cancer rules digestion. So like we said in the season, if this is the time to honor what has already been created and so that we can expand it and do something else with it, it's also time to basically digest the year and assimilate what's happened or what's come up or what's passed through your conscious awareness. And some of it's a data dump. You know, we don't need it all. But some little nuggets of gold are in there. So digesting and processing. If we don't do that, you get backed up and it can cause illness literally and otherwise. So we want to be able to take that time out, and this is when you really have permission to do that. And then I do love the cancer thing. I don't know how many other cancers are in the room, but another one is that we do move sideways and backwards before we go forward. <laughs> so it is all good if that's how you roll. <laughs> and if you're not a cancer, you can do it this month. That's all. You can just do it for the month. That's okay, too. But moon is also the mother and Gaia and the Earth, and we want to honor that maternal energy at this time, especially, as I said, unifying. You know, the mother-father, the masculine-feminine, inner and outer is all coming into alignment at this time. And the reason we also want to be really cognizant of cancer, not only the sun is going there, but in two days the moon, the new moon will be there. It's a super new moon, which means it's closer to the Earth. It's in more exact alignment. And the magnetic pull is that much stronger on our bodies, on the earth, on our tides. Everything that the moon affects is a little bit more intense and a little bit stronger. What I learned this year for the first time, I've always watched the super full moons, and many of you have probably seen the super full moon where it's big and it's orange or yellow and it's 
really close to the horizon and it feels like you can touch it. Well, the super new moon, even though it's invisible, i got to tell you, when I watched the sunset, it's been three, this is our third one. We had the last two months of super new moons as well. And I live on the beach in Florida, on the Gulf Coast of Florida, and I was watching the sunset, and the sun seemed bigger and closer because they're just in a line. And it never even occurred to me because I'm just so into the moon <laughs> that I was like, I didn't even think about the sun feeling closer and looking bigger and everything, but it's magical. It's really amazing to look. And we do get super moons every year, and we get eclipses every year. Eclipses signify change. And so what I tell people is there's, there's energy for change every year, twice a year. And what changes is the sign and those, the energies and the lessons that come with that. So right now we are moving into a season of Leo Aquarius eclipses. So the break to realign still comes back to the heart and the individual within the context of humanity and the community and the larger global community that we are a part of. The Leo Aquarius eclipses are happening now, and the last time they did that was 08 and 09, if that rings any bells. <laughs> and um, after, beyond that, it was 99 and 2000. So the eclipses run in what are 19, 20-year cycles. And, uh, and again, with the patterns, I always tell people it's a 20-year pattern that moves in like five-year increments. <laughs> That's the nodes that, will, that signify what the eclipses are going to be in that year. So this year, we're focused on our hearts and being more childlike and more connected to our compassion and our passion itself and being super creative. We've got to get creative these days, certainly. And we're going to be supported for that break to realign in that regard. And in August, i got to say this, just because as a true astrologer, you've got to mention, that the, uh, the eclipse that we're going to have August 21st is actually visible in the state um, of, from North Carolina, to Washington, not in my Florida, so I'm traveling. I'm going to go somewhere so I can see it. <laughs> but it's going to be really magical if you get a chance to witness it. It is really rare. It's been a really long time since we had a total eclipse, and it'll be a really long time before we have another one. <laughs> the, the eclipses are in both. We're going to have full moon eclipse and a, um, and a new moon eclipse. But on, 20, on the 21st, there's your book. <laughs> I, don't quote me. It's the 7th and the 21st, I remember. Which is which? Oh, well, you know what? I can talk about the lunar flip because that's happening with two Leo new moons coming up next month. So, okay. We are, just want to be right. I don't want to say this wrong. The full moon lunar eclipse in Aquarius is August 7th, and the new moon solar eclipse is in Leo August 21st. And so that is when you will get an opportunity to break to realign. And that would be around your heart energy, your Leo, your love, your children, anything related to children, or like I said, creative babies count. <laughs> and Aquarius is humanity and for progress and what we want to do there. Well, in order to progress these days, we really have to be more heart-centered and more connected to our hearts and the light, which is always part of Leo's thing. So as we move through cancer and replenish ourselves, and fortify ourselves and clear our sacred space or tend to our creations, we're going to move into those eclipses and then change is going to start happening. So be careful what you wish for. <laughs> and really call it in in the most compassionate, ease and grace way because the other thing about eclipses is it does signify radical shifts and things come out of nowhere seemingly, but really they've been brewing for a while. And it's just time for us to change. So we do have that support to do that. And the season supports evolution. And the light is going to start getting less and less and less as we move toward our harvest time. But right now, you're just supported to expand and to... Oh, bear with me. Apologize, you guys. To expand into your heart and to ground your base in some kind of way that you feel more secure and more well-fed and nourished and supported. And that's what we're going for. The energetic support is all around us. So I am going to shift that so that she can bring it all into your, our bodies and our consciousness in another way. I love it. I love what Shanta takes what I do and then takes it to a whole other level. <laughs> so thank you, Donna.
I apologize, everyone. I muted myself, and Shanta is getting in. And so if you will bear with us, technology is working us. I apologize for the little delay here. But we are having a wonderful day. It is beautiful on the mountains from my college. <laughs> and we are having hot, hot, hot in the 90s. And we are moving through this season with joy and passion. This has been a lot of fun being on the mountain. I can't wait for more people to get here. Mm, yes, yeah, stretch, absolutely, relax. Get ready for the meditation because that's going to take you into a whole other zone. <laughs> so be comfortable, absolutely. And you, you got to say something, talk. Can you hear me? I cannot be unmuted. Okay. Unmuted. Now I'm unmuted. Muted. Okay. I think Shanta's good to go. Hello. I'm back. We're taking a little stand-up and stretch break here in this room in Mount Shasta. So you can take that time for yourselves if you need to. Thank you, Kelly. That is an amazing array of possibilities for us for this new time. So we're going to start with a little blessing. This is going to be a moment when we're going to offer blessings for the planet, blessings for what we most need. And we want we know what's not working. So we don't need to go down that road. But what we really need to do is anchor what we truly want to experience and what we really want to see onto the planet. So is so people just need to do a star six. How do we do this? Unmuted. Unmuted. Muted. Okay, everyone. If you would like to offer a prayer, I need you to please star six to speak, and then when you're done, star six again to mute yourself again. And I am going to adjust here. So anyone who would like to offer a prayer, Shanta, would you like to get us started? And then together we say, and so it is. Thank you. Anybody else?
star six if you'd like to say a prayer. Okay. Okay, we might have technical difficulties. So let's just move on. Okay. All right. So we, we give thanks to the technical angels that are here to assist us. And any prayers that that you want to say, Kelly, we can certainly take our time to. <laughs> It's, yeah, we're, we're, we're just going to go ahead. So thank you for honoring the prayers of our hearts. We know that each person has, has a vision and a prayer and a desire and a hope for their lives and for the good of the planet. We know that even though they are unspoken, that they are reaching into the highest realms to bring the divine presence, creative solutions onto the earth right now. So we anchor all these visions and dreams that are in the highest good and for all concern. May all humanity live in their highest dream and reality at this time. May they awaken to the love and the the incredible abundance that is here for us now. And together we say, and so it is. Thank you. So we are coming into a place of gratitude. So just allow yourself to sink into a place inside yourself that can hold beautiful, empowering gratitude. Maybe you have to stretch to think of something that to be grateful for. Just just know that if you had to tell your heart to beat or your body to digest, it would be so difficult. But we are so blessed because we have all of this assistance. So we are grateful for our lives, for the gifts that we've been given to use in this life. We're grateful for the beauty of this planet and all that is given to us. And as we come into this place of gratitude, we're integrating and honoring all that we've done up to this point in time, knowing that it is a blessed point of choice. And we're beginning to make choices that honor our soul in a way that we've never done before. We're opening to receive from the divine feminine consciousness in a way that allows us to receive guidance, to trust our intuition, to have an inner knowing what steps to take, what direction to go, and what we need in order to thrive as we move through our lives. So we breathe into these spaces of balance and harmony within ourselves. This inner temple of gratitude allows us to have a space to come back to so we can move into harmony, so we can move into a place of grace and divine alignment. And we remember that it's time for us to take care of ourselves. And when we honor that and when we take care of ourselves, we are allowing others to do what they need to do in order to fulfill their highest soul's destiny in this lifetime. So continuing to breathe into the space of gratitude in the self, we sink deeply 
into an alignment with our highest soul's reality. We sink deeply into an alignment with the light that is flowing from the highest source of all that is. We recognize that we stand in this divine light as a river of all creation, a continuous flow so that all our needs are met with grace and ease. We breathe that in. We welcome it. We receive it in whole new ways and bring it through us to anchor on to the planet right now. We're building these frequencies into our light body system. This new system of light that is an energetic, empowering place for us to live and travel and have multidimensional connections. In this light body, we anchor the truth of our being into our next choice in life. Continuously choosing the masculine and feminine aspects of our being and bringing them into harmony, bringing them into alignment. We're recognizing that we each have a masculine side and a feminine side. And it's like this incredible infinity symbol. It's like a golden infinity loop. And on the left side is the feminine. And on the right side is the masculine. And we can just imagine in our mind's eye that we're drawing these together in perfect unity within us. So we have these sacred aspects of divinity, the masculine and feminine, in perfect balance, in perfect divine connection within us, within our beings. And it allows us to be open to receiving divinity through us so that we are creating these partnerships with ourselves, with our all sides of our being. We're creating a partnership with our most divine self and with our human self. We're allowing this to be the place of truth and connection, the sacred marriage within us. And we say, do you take yourself to be your truly beloved, to honor and to hold and to cherish for the rest of your life. Take a moment to say yes to yourself and know that it's your time to honor this sacred partnership within your being. And let it, let it flow all the way through you to anchor into the earth at this time. So wholeness and well-being is our soul's highest reality. That is how we walk on this earth now. Renewed, recommitted to ourselves to allow an earth that is blessed with people that take care of their own needs and allow them to be gifted in the true river of all creation that's available to everyone. As we come into this place of honoring within ourselves, 
we are strengthening our energy system. We're creating appropriate boundaries that can feed us, that, that nourish us as we stand in our truth. We allow ourselves to receive the protection from Archangel Michael in this moment and always. As Archangel Michael joins us, he allows us to have this beautiful frequencies of golden light that strengthen our solar plexus, that strengthen our power center, so that our power is one with the divine wisdom working through us. And it strengthens our boundary system with three rings of gold and white right now. Centered, protected, connected. Take a deep breath and allow that in. And as you sit in this place of protection, your temple of the spirit within you, anchored to the earth, connected to source it is a perfect place for you to allow new visions to come for your life new visions to come to the planet these creative visions have so much magic in them they carry the, the power and the passion of this divinity working for our new time as we gather in the light of the solstice. It strengthens and fortifies us for the path ahead. And we send our visions ahead. We send these blessings of divinity to light up our path. So each step that we take is in alignment with our highest soul's reality. We bless our path in life. Know that you came here for this time, that you are the ones that carry the blessings for the earth, that you are the ones that are opening the way for others who are awakening now, that you are the bearers of the heart-centered consciousness that is creating peace on earth and well-being within all humanity. Honor yourselves and the path you have chosen and know that you are fully supported that there are angels, archangels, masters, the ancestors, and these beings of light that are coming to the planet in waves of light. More than ever before, we have so much support. Welcome it in. And let yourself be nourished. We give thanks for all these blessings. We give thanks for the new levels of trust and the unwavering faith to stay in harmony with ourselves and in harmony with the gifts that are coming to us now. yourself feel this love working in and through you in every moment and know that you are cared for eternally and that you are blessed we give thanks for all the assistance that we have now and always 
we give thanks that we are here together to honor the light in this time and to allow new levels of love and wisdom to work with us to bless the earth. Let yourself breathe very deeply and take in these blessings. And when you're ready, you can come back into this space and into this time fully renewed and nourished. And so it is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste, everybody. Okay, everyone. And, uh, on our global teleconference here, I just want to say thank you, and we love you and appreciate you for being with us across many time zones. Lots of people stayed up late for this, and we appreciate that. And I just want to say thank you, and good night. We will all be in touch. Many blessings. God bless you, and thank you. <laughs>